In this video, I'll be showing you how to wire up a flyback transformer for the purpose of creating a high voltage power supply. You'll need a pretty good quality multi-tester. A cheap one won't work, it's not sensitive enough. You'll need a power supply, 24 volt works well. This is one I built 20 years ago with four diodes and a transformer and it's still working fine. And you'll need something to write with. Here I have the voltage from the power supply running through the transformer. We're going to use it to find the high voltage pin on the bottom of the transformer. The power supply by itself is producing 26.3 volts. I'll check each of the pins. So far we have nothing. Okay, on pin 6, we have 13.4 volts. Pin 7, we have 1.2 volts. And nothing on any of the others. I'm going to turn the transformer around now and run the power through it the other direction. This is very important because if you start this way, you won't find the pin you're looking for. Notice that pin 7 still reads 1.3 volts, but pin 6 doesn't read anything. Pin 6 is the one we're looking for, and if you start this way, you'll be frustrated by the rectifier. Now the multimeter is measuring ohms, and we're going to go around and check the resistance of each of the circuits inside the flyback. I started by connecting to pin 1, and we'll go around and see which other pins are connected to pin 1. There's a resistance of point 0.2 between pin 1 and pin 3. There's a resistance of point 0.4 between pin 1 and pin 4. Pin 3. There's 0.1 ohms between 3 and 4. Four is only connected to one and three. There's point eight, point eight to point nine. There's point nine ohms of resistance between pin five and pin eight. There's 0.7 ohms of resistance between pin 5 and pin 9. Pin 6 is the high voltage pin, so we're going to skip that. Seven is not connected to anything. There's point one ohms of resistance between eight and nine. and nothing between 9 and 10. 
we know that pin 6 is the high voltage out and based on this chart I'm going to guess that pins 5 and 8 are the power in. Pins 5 and 9 would probably work too, but I think we might get a little more voltage out of pin 6 if we hook it up to pins 5 and 8. Notice that pins 5 and 8 are the highest resistance on the chart. I've now tested the flyback transformer and sure enough it was pins 5 and 8. So I've soldered a wire onto pins 5 and 8 and another wire onto pin 6. This is the ballast I got to run the power supply. The black and white wires of course go into the wall. Notice that there are two blue wires and two red wires and then one yellow wire for each of the two. You'll be able to power the flyback with one of the yellow wires and either one or both of the red or blue wires. So you can actually power four flyback transformers off of this one ballast. Here you see the finished power supply. I've been using this for a switch. I soldered these together and taped it. I'm not using the red wires at all, so I just tied them off. The blue and the yellow wires are going into pins 5 and 8 of the flyback transformer. Notice that I've got both blue wires tied into one of the inputs. These are the wires for pins 5 and 8. Here's the positive output, here's the negative. The transformer itself is hanging in oil, as oil is a very good insulator. This is the first flyback transformer I used. I insulated this one with hot glue and it seems to work pretty well also. Notice on this flyback that pins 4 and 8 are tied together. It won't work at all unless they are tied together, and it took quite a bit of experimenting to figure that one out. properly, one of the very cool things you can make is this Jacob's Ladder. 